Here we're looking at the tuning of a, a 75 pound induction coil. That's the second one there in front of the screen. We've tuned the other one before. This one has a Q of almost 13. I'm going to show that fact presently. And also then, right now then we have a meter, resistance meter showing. Eight hundred and sixty-eight ohms on kilo ohm setting. Now there, then, what we're going to do then is turn the actual circuit on and get the ohm meter out of the picture. The coil is connected by a green and white wires. There, we'll take the ohm meter out of the picture if we can get around the camera. Oh, brother! No, we can't do that. We'll do it and then come back. Yep. Yeah. Can't have no help around here. Okay, sorry about that delay, folks. Can't have anybody help me there. Takes a while when no one to help you in the world there. Ask for help, they don't ever give it. Never. Never. God bless President Trump, anyway. <laughs> so anyways, here we got there. 84.5 milliamps from a 100 volt variac. That's the system in residence. Okay, we got an L and a C. We took the resistor meter out of the picture, of course. It's surprising that it even recorded the resistance with each capacitive leg in there. Now we're going to destroy a myth anyways about uh, canceling of reactive components. And how we're going to do that is we've got a white short wire there. Back out the camera there. Now we can short either, if we short the capacitive bank, it's going to tell us the reactive consumption of the inductive side. We got that white wire, we're going to go in there and short that out. Accordingly, we got 84.5 milliamps from 100 volts, and we're setting it from the center point out. Little spark in there. And that's showing 6.62 reactive milliamps from 100 volt source. Now, you know, it's the source frequency of the company, the 60 hertz, that determines how effective these measurements will cancel each other. That's what we're seeing today 6.6 .6 milliamps. Okay, now we're going to take that short out of there and place the short across the inductive component. Okay, we'll take the whole short wire out of that. We're back to 84.4. It looks like our light went out for some reason. Okay, that Ratio of amperage consumption is the Q factor. Now we're going to see the balance on the inductive side. Which is the white and the green. 84.7. And back to 6.64. Now how close can you be matched? How close can you match that? Those reactive amperage consumptions were virtually identical. Okay? And so that we, we know that the capacitive and the reactive currents are complete cancellation. And then we know by the theorists that say that X sub L divided by R is the Q factor is completely wrong in this case 
and you only get 73% of the available Ohm's Law current from that 860 ohms we just showed, or 868, and we'll just disconnect that short and show the uh, from 6.6. .6, oh, yeah, I'm the inventor of the 666 machine anyway. I don't know if you guys do, but anyway. Ha ha ha. Now, okay, we divide that 84.8, divide it into the reactive current of the 6.6 .6 balanced on both sides. And that tells you the complete Q of the circuit is near 13. But that's only 73% of what should be had by the mathematics. So we're glad to be able to show this video. I haven't made one for a whole year. I'm going to investigate all these inductive components and further on. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Good night.